Hey everyone, welcome to the inaugural episode of The School Zone, the all-in-one walkthrough channel featuring Let's Play style commentary, tips, tricks, and strategies for beating the game. And best of all, tidbits of knowledge and trivia about the environment as we experience the gameplay together. You could call that the highlight, forte, piece de resistance of the channel. So I want to thank you for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy what I have in store for you. I can't tell you how excited I am to get started. We're going to launch the channel with Dishonored. It's a 2012 game developed by Arcane Studios and published by Bethesda. Most of you are probably quite familiar with it, so why am I starting off the channel with Dishonored? Well, for a few reasons. For one, it's one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, not necessarily number one, but definitely really high up there. It's got so many of the elements I love in video games, like stealth, action, looting, superpowers, cool characters, an in-depth story, style and flavor out the yin-yang. I have so many good memories of playing this game and spent countless hours at it. One of the best values for the money, which doesn't happen all that often in today's gaming landscape. In fact, between the Elder Scrolls series and the Fallout series, Bethsoft tops the list of publishers that have the highest replay value for me personally, but that's just me and my humble opinion. Elder Scrolls wouldn't make so great of a game for this channel because this channel is going to be more about exploring some of the fun factoids and interesting trivia that video games offer in relation to the real world. Fallout, though, would make a fantastic contender. However, I'm going to limit my retrospective of games to school to about three years at most. If they ever come out with Fallout 4, you can bet I'll feature it on this channel. I just want to make sure I feature some of the really cool Xbox 360 games before I move on to exclusively next-gen games, of which I'll cover both the Xbox One and PS4. In the meantime, I'm going to play the games in sort of a chronological order, starting with Dishonored and moving forward until we're caught up with the present. And last but not least, of my reasons why I'm starting with Dishonored, the game has a lot of elements that will strongly showcase the factoid element of this channel. Probably too much, actually. It's an extremely rich environment, so I'll use this game as a sort of testing ground to make sure I'm not running for more than like two months. I'll look back on the game when it's done and see if I went into too much detail, too little detail, get your feedback, and use all of that to shape the evolution of this channel. So you ready to get started? Let's do this. So one of the things I'm going to do when I start playing a game is show you guys the settings that I enter into the options menu so you can get a feel for how the game is played on this end. So let's head on over to options and I can kind of show you a little bit behind the scenes. All right, so for this particular game, we'll start off with general. Uh, auto use mana elixir means that whenever you're really low on a on mana that, and you have an available elixir, it'll automatically use it for you instead of you having to try to shuffle through your uh, menu and drink one real quick. It's very good for emergency situations. All right, kill cam mode. So we're going to have this on frequent. Uh, there's normal or there's off. It's not that big of a deal in this game. If, uh, if you hit somebody uh, square on from a distance, it'll follow the crossbow bolt, for example, or the dart. It's not like Sniper Elite or anything like that, but uh, we'll have it on just because it's a little bit of fun. All right, under difficulty, we're going to keep things at normal. Uh, we're not trying to go for any kind of super achievements on this channel. You know, play it on super competitive difficulty modes because that's going to detract from one of the uh, main highlights of this channel, which is going to be offering you guys factoids about the environment in the game. And if we're super uh, rushed or in some kind of frenetic situation all the time, I won't be able to really do that. In fact, you'll see how some of the, uh, the factoids slow down when I get into uh, tricky situations. I'm not going to put it on easy because I want to give myself a little bit of a challenge, but I think normal is fair. Auto save, you get what that is. Head bob amount, we're going to keep that to an absolute minimum, otherwise you guys are going to get seasick. I haven't quite figured out what chains climbing relative to camera is yet, but I presume it's you're, you see yourself climbing up the chains whenever you need to do that. All right, user interface. 
Vibration, always have off. This is kind of annoying. Not looking for that much immersion in the game. Look sensitivity. We're going to keep that on 20 for now. If you guys uh, end up commenting that some of my movements are still a little bit jerky, I can adjust that dial, but for now I'll leave it there. I always, almost always have the Y axis inverted. I don't know why, it just feels more comfortable that way. I kind of sort of combat pilot mode, but uh, that's what I've gotten used to over the years. Auto aim, we want on because that's going to be a real lifesaver. Auto aim strength, once again, uh, we're not trying to make this too difficult our, on ourselves in this particular uh, channel series because we're going more for the, the factoids. But, you know, of course, there'll always be tips and tricks and the general walkthrough that always comes with it. So, therefore, we're going to leave aim assist on and keep that uh, up to par as well. All right, so for audio, I'm going to start off with about 70. I can adjust that in post. You guys, once again, will are free to leave me comments about whether you feel like the audio is, is good, should be lowered, boosted, whatever. M music volume, unfortunately, I'm going to have to keep that at zero. Uh, music is one of the top contenders in video games for things like content, uh, ID matches, and copyright strikes. I, I, I'm pretty sure I can keep you guys entertained without the music, but when you play the game, you'll want to pump this up because some of the music is pretty cool and creepy. I wish it didn't have to be that way, but, but unfortunately, that, that's, that's the environment we live in on YouTube. The effects volume will keep it 70. I'm going to crank up the, the voices a little bit because you'll often hear voices in the background uh, that'll give you some clues, and it's not always going to come up in our next mode here, which is the subtitle. So you can hear those in the distance, and also it'll give you an idea of if enemies are close. Uh, for the subtitles, we're going to leave it on all speeches, so you guys can see what I'm seeing, and we can comment, I can comment, and uh, as we're playing the game, on some of the clues they give in the dialogue, and you guys can comment in the comment section about some of the things that are brought up in that mode. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Yep, covered everything, so let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start a new game. Once again, I'm going to start this on normal. And brightness is fine. I'll be overwriting everything. Very cool little intro environment screenshot you got there. Okay, Dunwall. I should start off by saying, is the city in which Dishonored takes place. The whole game takes place in this continent called uh, Gristal, I believe. And it's got a few different provinces um, that'll come up on the names of some products or food items that we'll see throughout the game. But I think for Dishonored, it takes place primarily in Dunwall. And Dunwall Tower is where the uh, royalty lives. And you're playing a character named Corvo Atano, who is, they call him here, the Lord Protector, but he's pretty much like the, the chief bodyguard to the Empress. And uh, you've been sent off on some sort of diplomacy mission, and you come back a few days early, and as you'll see from the dialogue, that's where the, uh, all the trouble begins. So let's get started. Corvo, if only there was someone else I trusted to send, so that you could remain near. But there is no one else, and the Spy Master was right to insist that I send you. The plague has taken so many, and we must find a cure. When you are near, my heart is at peace. Emily and I will count the days until you return. Hurry home, and bring good news. Steady hand. That's it. Watch it. Cast off line. Casting off. We're away. Take us straight to Dunwall Tower. Lord Corvo has news for the Empress, and we've come a long way. A long way to bring bad news. The sailors say there's a curse on us. Black magic. <laughs> Superstition. 
For all we know, there's a cure for the plague by now. Maybe. We live in strange times. Sending the Empress's bodyguard away for a couple of months. That's unusual. Well, this was important. We need help with the Rat Plague. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Rat Plague later, because it's one of the, uh, the big um, elements in the game that sort of sets up the backstory for, for what's going on. But here we come to our first factoid of the game, you could say. Paul there. We're going up. This right here is called a water lock. So, a water lock or a canal lock is a device that's used for raising boats to go up higher in elevation, as you can see that's going on here. It usually involves maneuvering into a, a chamber and then pumping in water. The Empress will be waiting for your news, Corvo. Which also causes the ship to rise due to buoyancy. The Panama Canal is probably the most famous example of uh, a water lock. Corvo, she's you should go see the so one of the things I'm going to be getting used to is trying not to talk over the characters in the game. So it'll get a little, it'll take a little getting used to, you know but time, I'll get used to it. So yes, if you ever hear me uh, just stop talking for a moment, it's because the characters are usually trying to say something. Just don't do anything crazy. Sokolov's changed everything again, and we don't know what the hydraulics can do now. We've got him here today doing a portrait. If there's a time to try something, it's now. All right, so let's just see what these two engineers have to say, if they have anything useful. There he is. Good voyage, sir. Um, yeah, good voyage. Welcome back, Lord Protector. All right, so... We'll be kind of uh, searching around the environment on most occasions for cool things to school, you could say. Oh, here's a nice little view. Let's see what this guy has to say. Fewer ships moving along the river now, with the plague and all. Yeah. Alright, I don't know if we saw it in the beginning of the game, but these two ships right here carry whales. They're, they're, they're whaling ships. I'll see if I can throw in a screenshot on one of the social media pages so you can see what I'm talking about from the intro screen. It takes a while for you to sit there and watch the in intro screen, but eventually one of those whaling ships with a whale on it will, will swing by. All right, so let's see what these guys have to say. Her Majesty is waiting in the pavilion. Hello, sir. What is a pavilion? So a pavilion is kind of a, an open air structure. Actually, we can see it right here. Uh, this is the pavilion. Sometimes when it's built so that you can look out over onto a nice view of some kind, like either an ocean or, or a garden, it, sometimes it's called a gazebo. Uh, you may have heard either of those two terms. All right, so this is Emily. The Empress's daughter. Will you tell me about your trip, please? Were there any whales? Wait! Let's play hide and seek first. I'll cover my eyes and you hide. You have time? Mother's busy talking to that nasty old spy master. <laughs> that nasty old spy master. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and play hide and go seek with Emily because uh, later in the game, if you go through with this particular choice here, then she'll give you a free rune. And we'll learn later, if you haven't played Dishonored, that runes are what give you your superpowers. So, okay, go on. Okay, here we go. And if you're new to the game, it also kind of teaches you uh, about stealth and well, things like that. Well, you and very sad. I think she missed you. See if you're still good at this. I'll hide my eyes and count, and at the end of the countdown, I'll try and find you. Okay, I'm going to count to ten. Find a place to hide. 
All right, so stealth mode's pretty self-explanatory. Just uh, just press on, on a Xbox 360 at least. Press the the B button. Okay, so I happen to know that one, up here is one of the best places to hide for this particular game. In fact, we can hop on this little perch here and kind of look down on the action. So, while she's kind of looking around for you, here? I can tell you a little bit about Hide and Seek. Hide and Seek is a game that's not new to modern times. It's actually, it's probably been played back as far as the caveman times, but the first written recording of the game was back in ancient Greece when it was called Apodi Dr Dr Driskinda. Uh, hopefully I didn't butcher that uh, okay. pronunciation. But yeah, it's, uh, it's probably evolved through the centuries through several variations and it's still played today. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep hiding here, although it seems like it's safe to come out. We're going to keep hiding here until, there we go, until we get that little update. And now we've accomplished that, so we can come out of hiding. All right, so we're going to take just a quick peek around these copper coils here and just see what's what's up over here. All right, so Dishonored, you know, <laughs> I would classify this game as steampunk. You know, maybe there are some purists out there who don't think it's steampunk because maybe there aren't enough rivets or something, but I consider it to be one of the only steampunk games out there uh, right now. It's not a genre that's that's used very often, but it's a really cool literary genre. And for those of you who don't know what steampunk is, it's a, a genre of sci-fi fantasy fiction that sort of embraces the styles and technologies of the 19th century, but usually with like steam-powered or early electrical technology that, that may not have been known to the general public. Uh, think of like H.G. Wells or Jules Verne, but anyway, I, I, to me personally, it feels like a steampunk video game, and there aren't many out there, so I'm going to embrace it as that. Um, and we can tell that it's it sort of takes place during the the 19th century because of these things like smokestacks. Let's put it this way: I would say it's based loosely on Great Britain's Industrial Revolution, which spans the late 18th century to early 19th century and well i say that because uh, there's some more advanced technology that you'll see like the use of arc light street lamps uh, in the game which didn't really go into use until around uh, maybe 1870 or so so that's where i would put the the game based on now of course dishonored is built in its own universe so they can pretty much do whatever they want. But one of the fun things that we're going to be able to do is kind of base some of the factoids on, on real life. So let's continue our journey. So for a 2012 game, the visuals in this are, are, are pretty good. I mean, it's definitely got a lot of flavor, got a lot of style. The Lord Spymaster is with her, but she said to show you right in. All right, well, before we go up there, we're going to... Welcome home, Lord Protector. Stop moving, Campbell. And you, Corvo, welcome back. From wherever you've been. They sent him all around the Isles to beg for aid. A waste of time. My elixir will banish the plague from this city. Now keep still a moment, High Overseer Campbell. I'm not so sure that painting looks like Campbell. Okay, so we're going to meet these two characters because they're going to come up quite a few times during the game. This is Sokolov. He's sort of uh, a mad scientist type, you could say. 
You saw my improvements to the waterlock. Yes, and we talked about them as well. And this is the High Overseer Campbell. It was a fool's errand, Corvo. The plague comes from inside us. We must all strengthen our faith. High Overseer, I must ask you to hold your pose. <laughs> now, the Overseers are going to be a faction that comes up in this game pretty often. And notice he talked about the uh, spiritual side or having faith because a lot of their magic is sort of based on that. Um, what do we have here? Gristal Cider. So Gristal, I believe, is the name of the fictional island in which Dishonored takes place. So that's just the name of this particular type of cider. But cider, just in case you don't know, and a lot of people don't aren't going to know all these facts. Uh, you know, if you know some of these facts already as I'm going through them, then you should consider yourself smart. So, for those who don't know, cider is a a, a juice that's made from fermented apples. Um, it's usually alcoholic. It doesn't always have to be from apples. Sometimes it can be made from pears, but predominantly cider is an alcoholic beverage that's made from fermented apples. So let's keep going. Head up here and start this party. We'll see you at once. Oh. It's been good traveling with you, Corvo. He's one of the good guys. We'll meet up with him later. Should we gather for whiskey and cigars tonight? Indeed. They're sick people, not criminals. We've gone beyond that question, your majesty. They're They're my citizens. And we will save them from the plague if we can. All of them. Very well. We will not speak of this again. Mother, Corvo is back. Thank you, Emily. Leave us, please. As you wish, your majesty. Corvo. Two days early. Full of surprises, as usual. Yep, yeah, he's one of the bad guys. <laughs> okay, so let's see what these two have to say. Mother's going to be happy. She missed you. It's a fair wind that brings you home to me. What news have you brought? All right, so we have a letter to give to the Empress. <laughs> That's cool. She takes her hand away when you back off. I didn't realize that. All right, so let's give her the letter. See, up there, you saw they called it gazebo instead of the pavilion. I hope that one of the other cities had dealt with this before, knew of some cure. This news is very bad. We're at the breaking point. Cowards. They're going to blockade us. They'll wait to see if the plague turns the city into a graveyard. Are you okay, Mother? You seem sad. Yes, don't worry, darling. Mother is fine. Wait, where are the guards? Who sent them away? Mother, look! What are they doing on the rooftop? What? Emily, come here! Uh-oh. Assassins! No, you don't. Alright. Oh, I missed. That's right. There's another one. I don't think so. Corvo, thank you. If you hadn't been here, just doing my job, ma'am. No more. Oh, again. Mommy. this guy's using no. black magic. Get away from her. Oh, damn! Corvo. Don't do that. Uh, 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 mommy. Uh. Get away, Corvo. Kidnapping and murder. Corvo, it's all coming apart. Find, find Emily. Protect her. You're the only one. You'll know what to do. Won't you? Corvo. Ward us all. Look at what he's done. Yes, he's killed the Empress. 
What did you do with young lady Emily, traitor? Her own bodyguard. Ironic. I'll see you beheaded for this, Corvo. Take him. And thus he becomes dishonored. Framed for kidnap and murder and thrown in Coleridge prison. Why didn't he speak up? It's one of the things about this game I notice is that the, the main character doesn't really say much. I think he... I'm not even sure if he ever speaks throughout the game. But I guess they, they sort of did that on purpose. To maybe give you uh, a greater immersion into the character. Because then you can sort of place your own voice onto him in your head. But, uh, but yeah, I would have spoken up at that moment. Alright, six months have passed. Ooh, never read that part. So he's been rotting away in prison, I guess, for a while now. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, his execution draws, draws near. All right. So we're going to do a little prison breakout now. This is your final chance, Grover. Sign the confession and let me give you the rights to put your spirit at ease. Don't do that. That was mean. That's enough for now. Get out. Let's give the man some time to think. Corvo, the Empress is dead. Her daughter Emily is hidden away and no one will ever know the truth. Yes, unlucky you. Tomorrow you'll be executed, but it's for a good cause. This country needs strong leadership now. Someone to guide the weak. And that's where we come in. There was nothing personal in this. Even though you almost sank our plans. But it turned out well. You were in the wrong place at the right time. And someone has to take the fall. Goodbye, Corvo. God! Take him back to his cell. All right, so they pretty much just admitted that they concocted the whole plan and that they want you to be the fall guy. But Corvo wouldn't sign the confession, so... You should eat, Corvo. This meal comes from a friend. Because he holds true to his beliefs. All right, so someone left us... A friend left us a, a little meal and a note. Corvo, who we are is irrelevant right now. Just know that we have faith in you. Here is the key to your cell. Once you're out, head for the prison's interrogation room. Take the explosive there and plant it on the outer door. When the bomb goes off, run. Make for the river and lose yourself in the sewers. You'll find some useful gear stashed there. One of the prison guards will leave a weapon just outside your cell. And good luck. We need you alive and well for what's to come. A friend. All right, so let's uh, let's get out of here. And there's our weapon. Seen anybody with signs of the sickness? You always amuse me. City watch sword. And we're gonna grab these little coins. Ooh, there's a rat. Look at that. First little rat in the game. I'll talk a little bit more more about rats later on because there's some cool factoids to give you about that but let's go into stealth mode and talk a little bit about uh, what's gonna happen next so as you can see from the screen there's assassinations and non-lethal takedowns we're not gonna try to be you know goody two-shoes throughout the game we're gonna do our fair share of assassinations but non-lethal takedowns tend to be a little more quiet so when you don't want the guard to yell out to his buddies who might be standing very close then go for the choke out instead it's on account of Corvo the one who killed the empress and abducted her daughter Emily so it's an occasion right a social event for the high and mighty come see the noble lord protector get his head chopped off they're as bad as us betting on the dog fights Oh, now's my chance. Attention. 
the solitary wing is off limits to maintenance. And you can also carry a guard immediately. So we're gonna put him down over here. Nice work. Get a few more before they get you. Oh yeah. We will. Now this game requires a lot of patience in certain circumstances, unless you just want to go ham on everybody. But uh, we're going to try to be a little more strategic. And we're going to let this guy walk up, turn around, walk back, and then grab this closer guard here. Alright, now's our chance. So now we just need this guy to turn around. Let's see if he, see if he can sneak around the side here. There we go. Gotcha! And you can kind of start backing up, actually, while you're throwing him over your shoulder. So we're going to put him here, too. Good for you. I hated that guy. Let's talk to him. Hey, kill a guard for me, will you? I will. Next guy. Tell Slackjaw I'm in here. He's got to get me out. All right, so Slackjaw is a character that we're going to meet a little later in the game. And we'll take this guy out for our buddy in the cell this there. Ridiculous. Camaraderie. Plague. Elixir. Bunch of oh, gotcha. Now, you'll see me carrying a lot of guards. I'm not going to do it all the time because I can get a little boring. But if you'll notice, when I pick him up, it loots him at the same time. So a lot, of, a lot of times we can kill two birds with one stone. And it tells us about leaning around corners. All right, that's good. So we'll throw him over here and move on. We are unauthorized personnel. All right, let's see if there's any more cool little factoids we can give you before we move on. So this is a boiler. All right, I don't know what Q means. Q means it's probably the uh, the brand name, but a boiler is basically a closed container used for heating water from which the steam can then be used for like heating the facility and you'll often see pipes like here you go pipes going up that uh, will radiate heat throughout a building which is basically what a radiator is it's like a mini a mini uh, boiler and um, in america we often call boilers furnaces so that's the more common name here if you're in America. So let's grab these little pistols and later we'll talk a little bit about what this type of pistol might be. It's some kind of mechanical flintlock mechanism but we'll get into a little bit more about some of those things as we go on. I don't want to give too many facts all at once and not move the game along as we go. We're also gonna talk a little bit about the hound pits later because that's going to come up as well but in the meantime let's see what we got here ah yes the staples of of dunwall of crystal probably so a tin of brine hagfish well first of all brined or brining is an old method of preserving food by steeping it in, in seasoned salt a seasoned salt water mixture it can also be used for pickling keeps the food hydrated, which is kind of the opposite of curing meats, which uh, turns them into jerky. Uh, but what are hagfish? Are hagfish real? Hagfish are actually real things in real life. Um, they're also known as slime eels. Uh, they're marine fish that are sometimes considered a delicacy in Asian countries. And they produce uh, a slime, which is normally a defense mechanism, but it's kind of used like egg whites in cooking. They're considered too gross, though, for the common Western diet. But they're, you know, in, in the West, they're more likely to be made into eel skin boots or belts, um, which has put them onto the endangered species list. Let's see, what else do I know about hagfish? Uh, they can go for a long time without directly eating because they can absorb the nutrients through their skin. But when they do feed, they actually help keep the, the sea floor clean. So... They're not bad little creatures. And here we have a tin of potted whale meat. Uh, also one of the common food items that we'll see throughout the game. 
So potted or potting is similar to jellying, which we'll see in a minute in one of these other items over here. Basically what potting is is that they'll take a meat and sort of cover it with, with hot fat and then they'll let the fat cool and it'll create sort of an airtight seal. That's what, what, what potting is. It's sort of a form of food preservation. Whale meat. Is, do people actually eat whale meat? Actually, they do eat whale meat. Um, it usually consists of the muscle and blubber, uh, blubber being the fat on whales. It's not really common, but it is eaten around the world, mostly in like Scandinavian countries. Whaling, though, is considered a very controversial topic. In, you know, especially in the modern world, because uh, many whales are considered endangered. Plus, whales are intelligent mammals, and they're not to mention majestic sea creatures, so we like whales. We may have to eat those things later if we get injured, but uh, in real life, whales are cool. Alright, so I haven't mentioned this thing right here yet, uh, Sokolov's Health Elix Elixir. This is basically what's going to be used to improve that that health line, that red bar over up on in the upper left hand corner. And uh, Sokolov is the guy that we met earlier who was doing the painting. So we're going to grab this and these and these and the bullets out of these guns and then head over here. Yep. Eating and drinking restores some health. Alright, so here we have the uh, the hagfish again. We'll discuss those. We'll grab these coins. Um, ah, and here we have a tin of Pratchett jellied eels. So I think Pratchett is probably the brand name, but jellied eels, are they real? Yes, they're real. Jellying is a form, also a form of, of food preservation, but jellied eels uh, specifically are a dish that is not just eaten in Asia or uh, Scandinavian countries, but is, uh, is known as a delicacy in uh, England or other parts of, of Britain. It's usually freshwater eels though, not uh, sea eels, and they're chopped up and spiced and uh, they're usually served cold. So, I don't know about all that, but I guess a lot of people like them. Never had them myself, I have to say. Ooh, guard, let's grab him real quick. And we're gonna carry him and it'll grab the key at the same time. See that? Awesome. Let's see if we can put him in this chair over here. Nice. He just he's having a bad hangover there. Alright, so this is this leads down to the to the prison, but we won't go into all that. We're we're trying to escape here, so let's see if we can head into the yard. yard walkway okay so I'm gonna kind of test out for these first few episodes uh, what a really good length of the uh, videos should be but I think that this is probably getting on close to 25 to 30 minutes so we're gonna go ahead and stop here and continue on with our escape in tomorrow's episode all right, so thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed what you saw, and feel free to leave a comment. I'm going to be talking a little bit about how I'm going to sort of curate the comment section because I'm calling it something special. I'm calling it the After Schooled Club, and it's going to be a place where instead of being a haven for trolls, it's going to be a place where people can actually discuss the game and some of the cool facts that they saw throughout the game and add some cool facts of their own that they saw me Kind of breeze by and forget to mention so that's going to be the place where you guys can really interact with this channel and sort of bring it to life so we're all going to be in on the discussion so to speak